So, I, I mean, the way I often describe it is that if we are, if we're in the 21st century now, we're, if this was the 20th century, it'd be the equivalent to 1914, yeah. right? And um, so sometimes I, I sort of sketch it out sometimes on a sort of timeline. If you think about, say, yeah, 20th century, um, yeah, it would be here, 1914. Now, obviously, the 20th century was dominated most of the social, political, and cultural change, and technological change, was dominated by two catastrophic world wars. Mm. And hopefully we're not going to have to go through that in order to <coughs> achieve the kind of steps forward we did achieve in the 20th century. And, and if people look back at the 20th century now, everybody goes, well, we came a long way, yeah? Um, but from 1914, so if, if we're in the 21st century now, we're, yeah, we're at that same point. Now, there was no way that in 1914 you could sit there and imagine what 1965 was going to look like. Uh, uh, the kind of situation, yeah, the kind of technological situation and social political structures by then. And then just as, right now, that was in an era where you did not have the same level of profound access to information technology that we now have. And uh, right now, I really, we're, we are, I really believe we're in, right in the middle of an extraordinary era mm. where there's really profound levels of understanding mm. being developed mm. uh, amongst people. And we've never been able to learn. Mm. Uh, we've never learned like we are learning now. Mm. And we've so, never shared information like we're sharing now as well, which I think is really, is really important. There's, there's definitely a trend towards people openly sharing mm. information and, and, and so that you, we see it in you know, open source software, but it, it goes beyond that as well. So if you if you if you're looking if you were to imagine say visualizing access to water clean water yeah. through the 20th century I'd love to have a map that could render where where you sort of, where water infrastructure came to so say so my my family um, are from northwest England from Liverpool and you know in 1950 they didn't have a toilet in their house mm. and things like that and, but but through the 20th century there's a really there's a major and massive improvements in in infrastructure and, and, and basic services. Now, cast us into the 21st century and we're sort of winding through to here. Now, it's like the question is, what's going to happen next over the next um, 50, 60, 70 years? Um, and, and what's going to happen in the context of this profound level of information and, and interaction that's now possible? Um, so at a basic level, I think ACTO is charting the transition of the world out of poverty with the chart being the, the, the key elements in those charts being um, access to certain services and the quality of those services so particularly things like water and sanitation education and health to a degree although education is a difficult thing to track because a lot of things influence education whereas actually access to water is something that's really pretty straightforward to, to track. Um, so yeah, we're we're in that sort of business really of, of how to how to take that how to map that whole mm. transition. Um, out of that, of course, come some some important things. So one is how does it give people a voice on the ground who are involved in the work going on, and this can often be in very remote parts of the world, um, very poor parts of the world, but right at the frontier of where say so mobile phone technologies um, coming into place. A lot of the time, so ACVO um, runs open source software as a, as a service, but we're also involved in going and training people on the ground to use, say, um, we have a tool called ACVO Flow, which is used to do yeah, monitoring sure. and okay. evaluation of projects and to map things like water points, say. And then everything well, goes yeah. online. Yeah. yeah. But that... Um, Often we're in situations where you know people are picking up a smartphone for the first time, um, but we're you know it, it's not a question of if people are going to get access to smartphones in some of these places. It's like basically it's just a question of when you know when when will when will people in Africa on a really big scale get access to smartphones? I think it's a question of is it three years time, five years time, ten years time? It's not a question of if it's going to happen, but when it does that's going to make a really profound difference. Mm.